Welcome to the 158th episode of the Reading and Writing Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Rutherford. Stay tuned for my interview with Michael Nethercott, author of the mystery novel, The Seance Society. Stay tuned for the interview. The Reading and Writing Podcast is sponsored by the book-loving nerds at Riffle. Riffle is an online book community that connects readers with authors and books that they'll love. Readers use Riffle to find the next book that they want to read. And authors use Riffle to make their books stand out and drive sales. Join the Riffle community today at rifflebooks.com. That's R-I-F-F-L-E-B-O-O-K-S dot com. And look for the link in the show notes as well. Welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. My guest today is Michael Nethercott, author of The Seance Society, an O'Nelligan and Plunkett mystery novel published by St. Martin's Press. We're recording this interview at the Crime Bait Conference in Boston. Michael, welcome to the podcast. Hello, Jeff. Well, I wondered if we could start out by having you read a page or two from The Seance Society. Sure, just to set up the scene. Um, it's midway through the book, and Mr. O'Nelligan and Lee Plunkett, who are two detectives, are on their way to interview suspects. Mr. O'Nelligan is a 60-ish Irish immigrant, and uh, Lee Plunkett is a private eye, but not a very skilled one. And that's why he depends on Mr. O'Nelligan. So they're driving along here. For the first leg of the journey north, we chose silence. Sunk pensively in our seats, we drove through a messy, sputtering snow as traffic sped around us. Eventually, our mood was sweetened by Elvis Presley. Aha! My companion slapped the dashboard as Elvis warmed us, warned us off his blue suede shoes. It's my lad from Tennessee. Elvis had become Mr. O'Nelligan's lad only a few months ago when he first viewed the singer on The Ed Sullivan Show. Now, whenever the radio offered up the hip wagon rock and roller, my Irishman was all ears. That's how music should be, he now said. The happy song should kick your heart up into the bright clouds and the sad one should bury it in the twilight mist. Young Elvis can do both with equal aplomb. You should really get him, you should really give him more of a chance. We'd been through this before. Mr. O'Nelligan believed that because of my relative youth, I should be won over by the whole Elvis craze, but I was not. After seeing a newsreel of teenage girls shrieking and sobbing at one of his concerts, I thought it best to keep my distance from the phenomena. The idea of my gray-bearded colleague somehow aligned with legions of tear-smeared Bobby Soxers was just, was just a little too much to digest. I guess Presley's okay, I said. Okay, okay, only okay? Where is your passion, Lee Plunkett? You should purchase one of his record albums and treat Audrey to an eve of dancing and romancing. Dancing and romancing? You didn't really just say that, did you? I stand by my turn of phrase. Stick to Yeats and Shakespeare. That's my advice, no charge. Elvis kept on crooning, a sneer evident in his voice. He was very adamant about us laying off of those shoes. Great. Well, for those listeners who haven't read The Seance Society yet, how would you describe the novel and your two protagonists, O'Nelligan and Plunkett? Well, I'd call it a traditional mystery. Um, my influences were the Golden Age writers, uh, Agatha Christie, most prominently, uh, Rex Stout, John Dixon Carr, Dorothy Sayers, those folks who kind of established the genre. And my two, uh, two detectives are, I took two sort of classic sleuth types. I took the private eye and I took the gentleman amateur. Uh, Lee Plunkett is a private eye. He's the one with the actual license. But the thing is, he's not very effective. He's a second generation PI. His father before him, Buster, was a real rough and tumble, two-fisted, Bogart kind of guy. And Lee has none of that. Uh, his his skill set is pretty much that he can take very neat notes and order them well, and he's good at interviewing. But for the actual solving of the case, he depends on Mr. O'Nelligan. And Mr. O'Nelligan is a Irishman. He was born in County Kerry. And I should mention that there's a lot of Irishness in this, and that's because my, uh, on my mother's side, my grandparents were off the boat from County Kerry. Mr. O'Nelligan is, uh, he's got a large resume, if you will. He's been a bricklayer, he's been a train conductor, he's been a teacher, he's been an actor. He was a, uh, an Irish rebel, fought the British back in the 20s. 
So he's got this this large background of, of things that he's done. And uh, he's a great quoter of literature. He loves to quote William Butler Yeats and Shakespeare, but he also, as that passage suggested, uh, loves uh, Elvis Presley, and he loves to read comic books. So he's kind of a mixed bag. Great. Well, I know the Seance Society is set in 1950s Connecticut. How did you decide on that setting and time period for the novel? Well, my sort of basic answer when people ask why did I choose the 50s is because I didn't want to have to call up my uh, young adult daughter and son every time I wanted to uh, have a reference to Wi-Fi or the, <laughs> or the uh, <laughs> smartphones. So I said it in a technology which I had full grasp of. That was the 50s. Uh, Connecticut, I grew up in a small town in Connecticut, and Felmont is, is somewhat that town. It's a fictitious town because I didn't want to be nailed down too right, much. Right. Uh, and it's, it's still New England, but it's also kind of leaning towards New York, so it's, it's kind of got a mix of sensibilities. Sure, sure. Well, well you, just, you just mentioned that you grew up in, in Connecticut. Um, when, when, you're, when you were writing the novel, did you have to go and do any specific research about the 50s to remind yourself of, of any of the... Yeah, yeah, I, I, always, I always research. And, um, oh, I did a lot of, um, you know, just, just seeing what the pop culture, mm -hmm. you know, I, I had a general grasp of it just to get sure. specific. And, you know, I think any writer tries to get the research right. But when you're writing 300 odd pages, that... You know, you could, you can go astray, and uh, oh, things like I have, I reference a character watching the TV show Western Gunsmoke on a Saturday night. So I made sure that, yeah, indeed, it was showing on a Saturday <laughs> night, and uh, yeah, every little, just every little thing that you can that would sure. have colored to the story. Sure. Well, well, in addition to your novel, The Seance Society, I know you've also written several mystery short stories. When did you first start writing, and, and um, have you always written? In the womb, I was writing. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was uncomfortable for my mom, but she understood. Uh, you know, since I was a kid, um, I still remember the first, uh, the title of the first short, short story I wrote. I think I was in, I don't know, I probably was about 10 it's got a great title. I have no idea what the story was. The title was A Memory of a Storm on the Irish Sea, 1920. <laughs> good title. Was it a good story? I don't know. Uh, I've, I've been writing for years. I've uh, been publishing in, in periodicals, mm -hmm. uh, anthologies, magazines for a good deal. Uh, with the O'Nellick and Plunkett Tales, I have um, published several stories in Alfred Hitchcock Mystery Magazine with mm -hmm. these characters. Though I should say, when you read the novel, it's it's very much freestanding. And in the novel, I describe the meeting of Plunkett and O'Nelligan. So, for the reader coming in, they would feel very much that they're beginning on the on the ground floor with sure. the relationship. And, and had you written novels before, or was the Seance Society your your first uh, attempt at novel length? It, I have uh, in my in my writer's basket. <laughs> I do have a, a juvenile novel, but that's would really be considered a novella. Uh, so yes, I would say this is the first full-length novel. Sure, and and what was the writing process like for you when when you you know decided to to take the plunge and you started working on the Seance Society? Um, well, you can describe for your uh, listeners what I'm doing, <laughs> <laughs> holding up two two fingers exactly, and that's that's where the magic happens, Jeff. Yeah. I, I'm a two finger typer, so first of all, <laughs> you know when you think author, you don't necessarily think that. Um, my process is, um, it's, I, I'm not as exact as you might want. I don't get up a certain time every day, write a certain time. Mm -hmm. People have asked how long it took this novel for me to write. That's a bit hard to say because I had some other projects I was working on, but cumulatively I would say maybe six months. I tend to work in the morning, but I might work in my house. I may work at a coffee shop in town. I do take uh, a lot of notes. I do have diagrams of the structure and I know a lot of mystery writers just jump into it and don't necessarily structure out their plot mm -hmm. for me that really wouldn't work and especially with a, ho a whodunit I'm, not, I'm never quite sure how people do that without <laughs> figuring out um, in my mind it's it's as if with a whodunit it's as if you have a mathematical uh, equation in the middle of the novel and everything mm -hmm. has to in some way meet up with that equation and with that that answer so sure 
And so, so you know, according to that, you you knew who who did it before you started writing page one. Uh, I would say pretty much. Maybe not page one, but maybe by page twelve. I don't know, <laughs> thirteen for chance. Uh, I do remember entertaining a possibility of of another character being the killer, a character who ultimately never even made into the book. Uh, and then when I got a little clear of just how things had to fall together, I latched onto whom who my culprit was and stayed with that. Right, right. And um, given your, your success to date with your short stories and now the Seance Society, what, what advice would you have for aspiring writers who may be listening in terms of um, any kind of writing recommendations or tips? Well, I'd say, you know, there's a lot of talk of uh, luck and pluck and how much is luck in the process. But I once heard someone saying, well, yeah, luck can enter into it, but you first have to have a manuscript. You have to write the best novel or whatever the piece you're doing is that you can possibly do. And another is I, I bring up the two finger thing just because, uh, you know, it's 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 fine to have a view of what a writer should be and and to read books on writing and 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 certainly to listen to experts and listen to experienced writers. But in the end, what works for them may not be what works for you and to thine own self be true you really have to find what structure works for you and such and i think you just keep at it you know and um you have to be prepared for rejection of course that's always part of it and uh you know realizing that there's going to be many rejections and but you just shake them off and you keep going great great um what are you working on now well the second book of the series is in the can. Okay. That's, that's official talk there, Jeff. In the can. Uh, it's been edited by my editor. Um, it's it's ready to go. And do you have a title for that? Well, yeah, but I should say that this novel, The Science Society, has had four titles before oh, okay. it settled. Okay. So uh, it, uh, the second novel deals, it's again in the 50s with O'Nelligan and Plunkett, and it deals with the folk music beat poetry mm-hmm. scene of Greenwich Village Coffee House, and the title working title is The Haunting Ballad. The Haunting Ballad. So, Great, great. So have you, have you seen the preview for that new um, uh, what's the what are the Coen Brothers movie? No, why? Is it my story? Uh, no, but it's set in, in the, the beat. Oh, it's no, no. And, no. and, and no. folk scene. Well, uh, that could be good or bad. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, so so you're, you're, you'll have to take a look at it. Right, it looks right. good. It looks good. Oh, there's a Kerouac, not Kerouac, uh, Ginsburg movies out too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like Harry Potter is Ginsburg. Yeah. Who can compete with that? <laughs> well, I think they're doing more like the Bob Dylan esque. So. Okay, okay. Yeah, more than the, the poetry scene. Okay. But um, so, uh, what books or authors have you read lately that you would recommend? Either nonfiction, fiction? Well, <laughs> uh, to be honest, I've been reading a lot of uh, theater books history and theater lore the third book is going to have a, a theater theme to it so a lot of the focus has been you know books with titles like weird stuff of the stage and screen you know um so have you started writing the third one you said no i'm sp- on my calendar it says i'm starting it next week <laughs> okay <laughs> will i be i guess i hope so uh i i also read some of the classics i go back uh, I had uh, taken a, uh, when I was a sophomore in high school, I took a American novel class and I, I faked it. I didn't read the, the book. So uh, over the years, I've, I've remembered what the list was. And I've been, you know, I read The Scarlet Letter about 10 years ago. I read Gatsby about five years ago. I'm trying to, trying to do right by my high school career. So I, I like to read the classics and, as well as traditional mysteries sure, and modern sure. mysteries. Great. Um, and where can people find you online if they're interested in finding out more about you or your books? Well, they can go to my website, www. No, that's too many W's. Yeah. You know how many folks. Yeah. Three W's uh, dot michaelnethercott.com. Great. And I'll have a link to that in the show notes. People can check that Great, out. Thanks. Well, again, we've been speaking with Michael Nethercott, author of The Seance Society, an O'Nelligan and Plunkett mystery novel published by St. Martin's Press. Michael, thanks for doing this interview. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, great.